All right, so you own an Aaron's Platinum SHO Rapid Track Snow Thrower. Today we're going to talk a little bit about some of the maintenance things you need to know. There's some in-depth maintenance stuff. I'm not going to get into that too much. There's uh, some chains that can be lubricated underneath. Worth learning how to do if you're really a gearhead. But probably that's something that you should bring to your dealership to get done every once in a while. But we need to change oil. We need to talk about skid shoes, shave plates, shear bolts, a couple grease points. Let's start off with oil and fuel. Okay, you picked it up. Guess what? Hopefully it's all dialed in and ready to go set up and there already is gas and oil in it. But if you have not picked it up or if you did pick it up and there was no gas and oil in it, let's make sure we put in a cold weather oil, right? Because this is going to be ran in the cold season and stick to a small engine oil. All right. Uh, I'm going to look at probably a 1030, maybe even down to a 530, something like that. Um, but stick to a small engine branded oil. And then fuel, okay? This is a product, depending on where you live, that you don't use it that often. They have really long periods of hibernation. And when things hibernate, gas doesn't like it. So at Carl's Mower and Saw, when I sell these, I always put one quart of aspen in the fuel tank and say, you know what? Great, that's what's in it. It's going to be ready to go when you are, when the snow comes. And then once you're using it, go ahead, use the gas that you have in your shed. But when you're done using it, I want you to run out of fuel and put another quart of aspen in so that when it sits for four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten months till the next snowstorm, it's going to fire up because there is nothing more frustrating than going out to fire up your snow thrower and the sucker doesn't go. So put a little bit of extra attention into fuel. We love aspen fuel here at Carl's Mower. It just avoids a lot of problems, okay? Aspen fuel, snow thrower, important. Here's my dipstick right on the top. Again, we talked about a, a good high quality oil, something made for the colder weather. Pretty easy, pull it out, wipe it off, check it. We recommend changing this annually, uh, or if you're gonna put a lot of hours, if you're gonna get you know over 50 hours, you might have to do it more than, more than once a year, okay? There's no air filter. I should, no, there's no air filter. Did you know that snow throwers don't have air filters on them? That is something an air filter on a snow thrower will cause a problem, right? They'll ice up because of all that moisture, ice blow, blowing snow in the air. So you don't have to worry about that, but not a bad idea to, to every once in a while throw in a new spark plug, okay? So that's kind of a maintenance there on that end. We have a few grease points on it. We actually have a grease point down here underneath on the side and then also on the other side so there's two there in the back and then if we turn it to the front so we can see what's going on we also have if i can turn this by hand i cannot there's a grease circ right there there you go there's some grease right there that's going to feed this shaft across the front i'm going to leave a little grease on there that'll keep the snow from sticking okay so that's kind of your maintenance there really important thing to pay attention to is the setting of your of your skid shoes right your those wear i'm running this thing down on the concrete dry skidding it along and it's slowly wearing away you want to set those right you don't want this sucker to be sitting right on the ground or we start wearing out this what they call the shave plate on the bottom that's dragging across trying to pick up as much snow as it can but if that thing is is actually itself running flat on the concrete on a rough surface you're more likely to pick up rocks you're also wearing that piece out you're wearing that shave plate out if that shave plate gets too worn you, you actually start wearing into your housing so always pay attention to your skid shoes and your shave plate is that shave plate wears it is a replaceable item it is a, a maintenance item of sorts replace it because if you go too far you're going to have some problems and then the skid shoes here on the side let me turn this a little bit sideways so we can see right i have two uh, bolts coming through each side so i can take the nuts loose and i can just simply slide these up and down and it is reversible so once one side wears out or the bottom wears out i can flip it over so i'm gonna have one on the left and right side so 
that I think is the most overlooked, to be honest. Um, people forget about that. Now, another thing, shear bolts. And I have, this is really cool, Aaron's has this nice little holder up top that holds two shear bolts. See the little groove in that thing? That little groove is designed to create a weak point so that when I'm out there digging through, augering through the snow, clearing snow, and I hit that chunk of ice. Remember the snow plow came by earlier and it threw a bunch on my driveway? And now I'm cleaning my driveway off and I hit that chunk of ice. Is If that goes through here and it is nothing to stop these from continuing to power, you can do some serious damage to the, to the gear case here. Right, and to the shed, all kinds of stuff. You can just rip stuff up. So there's a shear bolt, one on each side, one here and one here. Very easily replaceable. Make sure you always have a spare set or two sets of shear bolts. Uh, I've done it once or twice where I've been busting through a drift and, and hit a big chunk of ice. And yeah, it kind of sucks, but on the flip side, it probably saved me from a lot of money, a lot of damage to belts and bearings and gearboxes and all that stuff. Speaking of belts, there is adjustments on these cables that are running your belt. So that is something to pay attention to as the, as the belt stretches. You need to adjust that back in. If you don't, you're going to be looking to, to a belt that's slipping. And as that belt slips, it burns and then it wears out uh, quicker, a little more quicker, rapidly, if that makes sense. Let's show you how to fire this thing up. There's several things going on here. I don't know if I'm going to be able to get close enough. I'm going to have a fuel shut off right here on the side. So I'm going to first, or on the back. So I'm going to turn the fuel on if it has been turned off. I've got a primer right here. Pump this four or five times. And that's getting fuel up to the bowl, up to the Venturi, actually, the carburetor, to make it start easier. I have a key switch, basically an on-off switch. It's a key in there. So I'm going to turn it on. Clockwise will turn it on. And then right on the top, right on the top can't turn that too long but you'll see a gray lever and a black uh, lever it's in, in a round thing I turn the black clockwise to the choke position and the, the gray is actually the throttle underneath so right now mine's on rabbit now I have two ways of firing this thing up I can either pull the rope which is right here and Small thing, right? But you like that mitten grip handle is what they call it, that big handle because I'm going to be wearing gloves. Got my hand in there. I can give it a good pull. Or I can simply plug in an extension cord and push this red button. So if it hasn't started for a long time, that makes it way easier. But if you, if you just, if it's been running recently, maybe you're just going to pull the rope and go. So I'm going to take this, pull the rope. Nice, easy start, right? You like that? Now, mind you, it today sat in a warm building at 65 degrees. Once this is running, here's what we got going on. We got hand warmer button. So I flip this up. These hands are staying toasty. <sighs> Makes it much more comfortable. This right here rotates the chute. What direction do I want the snow to go, right? And I'm going to deal with that based on what direction my swath is going as I come forward or backwards or if the wind is blowing. This lever right here changes how far. So see the tilt here? The higher up, the further it's going to throw stuff. As it drops down, it's going to keep it closer. So again, where do I want it to end up? This lever right here is my ground speed. And it's very important to know that because there's times you're going to be able to go a little bit faster and times you're going to have to go slower. So you have first through sixth, very easy to change. You can actually shift on the fly. And then there is two reverse positions. I got myself in a corner and I can't back up. This is my auger. So my right hand, if I were in your position, my right hand gets stuff spinning. My left hand makes the wheels go. And now I can let go with my right hand. Okay, I'm in your position. And that gives me the ability to do the rotating of the chute or the shifting or the changing of where the material goes. So pretty easy to operate that way. 
rotate around. Now this is a tracked model, right? You've, you can see that. This has one other adjustment that uh, wheels do not have. So I have three positions that I can place these tracks in. Right now, it is in the wheel mode, which actually makes this act a lot like a wheeled snowblower. Easy to turn, you can roll it. So, you know, if I keep it in the shed, I'm gonna always have it in this because I can move it around, but maybe I just have a light snow and tight place I wanna be able to turn easily. I can then pull this trigger here on the side, one notch, lift up just a tad, and now it's in standard track mode. Just like any other brand of tracked snow thrower, it's gonna act like that. But boy, I've got some deep snow and I want to dig in. I need some power. Squeeze again. Now as I lift up, that gives me a positive traction dig in. Some serious snow eating power. Okay, you'll figure out what's best for you. Most of the time when, when we're out blowing snow, this middle position, this standard track works because it allows me the ability to, 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 to turn it, to actually move it a little bit as I'm steering it. But if I need that power, bam, dial it in. Okay, guess what? It came with an owner's manual. And here in the state of Washington at Carl's Mower and Saw, we sell some snow throwers. I've used them several hours, but by no means am I an expert. But I just wanted an opportunity to go over, show you these cool things, hopefully get you some information to help you make the most, to get the most out of your snow thrower. But I would always, you know, refer to this owner's manual. There's some things I missed, I'm sure. Help me out. Teach me some things, guys. Let's learn together. Check it out. We're so happy for you that you got yourself an Aaron's Platinum Rapid Track SHO Snow Thrower. Enjoy it. Have fun. Bring on the snow! Hey, man, forgot something again, right? Everybody always comes in and says, oh, look, I got a cute little shovel. It's not a cute little shovel. Actually, this is a, uh, a OSHA, I think, or a CPSE, Consumer Product Safety Commission, mandated thing. This is how you clear the chute when I plug it up. We don't want arms going down in here. That's when bad things happen. So accidents can happen. That's why this shovel, this cute little shovel is on the front as a safety device. is a way for you to clear jam snow, plug snow, that sort of thing. So, all right. I think I got it now. If not, tell me where I screwed up. And now bring on the snow so you can get out there with your Aaron's snow thrower. Have a great day. We'll see you all soon. Hey, this is Josh from Carl's Mower and Saw. Thanks for watching our videos. We're proud of the fact that we've been serving you with the best in outdoor power equipment since 1990. We're glad that you had an opportunity to sit down, watch our videos, learn something about an exciting new product that we have, something that interests you for your property, or really how to use your equipment to the best of its ability. Don't forget to like, subscribe, follow, whether it's on Instagram or YouTube. We're excited to share more information with you. See you soon.